I'm Emilio Pasmino, and today we're out here in Biscayne Bay, really close to the Florida Keys. And in a minute, we're gonna jump in the water. But we're not gonna do the usual snorkeling videos or diving videos that we've presented before. We're gonna show another aspect of conservation that might seem a little unorthodox, but I consider really important. Because today, we're going spear fishing. Our target today is going to be the southern stingray. Unlike the spotted eagle ray or even the oceanic manta rays, these guys are really common. They're not endangered or threatened or anything. And the rules are that we're allowed to catch up to two as long as they combine don't exceed 150 pounds. But today we really only need one. And if we're successful, we're gonna clean it and then we're gonna cook it so we pay respect towards our catch. The way this works is that I have an attachable three-pronged tip that I've put on this long shaft. Right here we can put like a rubber band. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull back as far as I can, aim, and shoot. Now for the moment of truth. That's our turn. <laughs> it wasn't long before I found my target and speared it with one clean shot to the head. However, at the depth that I had gone to, the water was too turbid to get a good video, and all the sand stirred up by the stingray moving just made things worse. So I only started recording as I was bringing it back up to the boat. So we did it guys, here we are with our catch, and it's about to fall. <laughs> we move it a little bit this way. We have a small southern stingray. And if you zoom in around here, you can see where I hit it. Here are the three prongs. And over here, I actually had to use my knife to stab it really quickly right here so that it wouldn't suffer. And it just pretty much, you know, went limp. Look how beautiful it well, was. Over here, we have the famous stinger. Stinger. We need to be really careful because even though this animal is dead right now, it can still inject the venom if I were to get stabbed by this point. And I would be in excruciating pain right now. You can see it's quite long. Imagine this going into your foot or something if you step on it. I've shown you guys stingrays in the wild before, but that was because they were alive and still swimming and I couldn't really get that close to them. But now is a perfect example for us to get up close with stingray anatomy. So I'm gonna just gently flip it over. And here you can see are the gills of the stingray, they're on the bottom. This is the mouth. The stingray is an animal that doesn't really have teeth. Because of its diet, it mostly eats crabs and other crustaceans. But what it does is that it absorbs them kind of like a vacuum. It opens up, sucks in water, and then crushes them with these powerful jaws. Now, on the top, we see that the stingray is very flat. This is because they often are going to hide in the sand. They're going to bury themselves to be very flat so the sand goes on them. That's how they camouflage with predators. But the only parts that will be raised are its eyes, which are located on the top of its head. This allows them to see predators coming without giving away their location. This adaptation is similar to alligators. They also have their eyes on the top of their head. However, alligators use them to spot their prey, as they are the top predators in their environment. It's interesting to see how two different aquatic animals have similar traits, but for opposite reasons. So right here, you see these tiny black dots that cover all the white belly. I believe those are called ampullae of Lorenzini. And these are actually sensors that they use to detect their environment. Those holes behind the eyes are not ears. They're called spiracles, and they help them breathe. Stingrays are closely related to sharks. Both of them belong to a group called cartilaginous fish. Despite their painful barb, Attacks on humans are extremely rare, as there have been only two recorded fatalities in Australia since 1945. Stingrays are a very diverse group of fish, comprising of about 220 species distributed across 10 families. Although most of them live in the ocean, in some parts of the world such as Africa, Southeast Asia, and South America, there are species that live exclusively in freshwater. So I'll definitely be on the lookout next time I head to the Amazon. 
To prevent the stingray from becoming spoiled due to the intense South Florida sun, we placed it in a cooler and hurried back home, vertically traversing the beautiful Biscayne Bay and seeing a few other creatures along the way. Okay, right now we're going to attempt to clean it. And by attempt, I mean because I actually haven't done this before, so let's see how this goes. From what I understand, what the first thing we got to do is we got to lay the wings on the side. Because the stingray, the cartridge runs down the middle. So there's going to be like a sheet that divides the top from the bottom. And I feel like I've hit it already. I just, keep going. Okay, so here we have a nice clean cut. Let's go back for a second so I can show you guys and I'll just continue. So here you can see where all the meat is. Right here is the cartilage. This is what divides the top and the bottom. Because stingrays are like sharks. They don't actually have bones. There's, let's say a sort of skeleton is made out of material called cartilage. Which is this right here. The here is where that line pattern on the meat comes from. So now I have filleted both sides of the top wing. And this is how much meat it gave us. You can see it's a lot. We still have to skin it, which I'm going to do in a bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. And there's still more meat on the bottom. So I'm going to do the same process that I did with the top on the bottom. Well, it's taken me a while, but finally we've gotten all of this. And then if I flip it over right now, you can see we were able to fillet the bottom too. This section right here is mostly organs. Like there's not really that much meat on it. So the good stuff is really gonna be what we peeled off, which is the wings. Flip it over again, you can see. We can really just get rid of all of this. The only part I would like to keep though would be the barb. I'm gonna try to see if I can preserve it. I'm gonna zoom in here. See what I'm grabbing here. I'm gonna try to cut it. It's very tough though. Came off. There we go. And here, we're just going to peel away the excess meat a little bit. I'll just pull it off later. And this is a stingray barb. Now, we seasoned the meat, we put a little bit of flour on it, and we're frying it. We're just going to have to wait a little bit until it's done, and then we can enjoy it. While we're waiting for it to fry, I wanted to one more time bring up the topic of sustainability. Now, let's imagine what would have been today's dinner had we not caught the sting. Let's say, for example, a piece of salmon, about the same size. That salmon would have come from a grocery store. And to get to the grocery store, first, it's probably either wild caught or raised somewhere. And since we don't really have salmon here in Florida, it's gonna be somewhere very far away, like Alaska or Chile. And to get from, from all those far away places, you have to transport it, either by land, sea, or air. And that process emits a lot of carbon because you have to transport it on a vehicle for hundreds or even thousands of miles. And so by eating this fish, the stingray, we're doing a process that is directly from the ocean to the table. We're cutting out all that transportation, all those carbon emissions, and reducing our overall footprint. So that is why it's good to sometimes eat locally. And sometimes you have to eat what you catch for it to be local. Now, for the moment of truth, here we have our fried stinger. We're gonna put a little bit of lemon on it, you know, just for good measure. We're gonna try it. Mmm. Spectacular right there. This reminds me a lot of the fish we eat in Ecuador when you go to the beach and they give you this with a little bit of uh, lemon and, and onions and rice. Very, very good. This was certainly a very different video than what we normally do here on the channel. But I'm glad that for at least one meal, I was able to significantly reduce my carbon footprint. It would have been better though if it had been an invasive species instead of a Florida native. So next time we do this, we're probably gonna do something like maybe a lionfish or a snakehead. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy my meal. So bueno muchachos, till next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new adventures by clicking the channel icon right above. 
or click here to watch another video. And as always, thanks for watching.